In this tutorial you will learn how to install and configure FileZilla server for Windows. Download FileZilla server from FileZilla website. Confirm you want to allow it to make changes to your device. You need to accept the terms. Select what to install. Normally you want both the server and the administration interface to configure it. By selecting the start menu shortcuts or desktop icons, the installer will add links to the administration interface and to start or stop the server. Browse and choose where to install it or just click next and get it installed in the default location. Choose a start menu folder or enter one. FileZilla server is installed as a Windows service and you can start it manually or automatically. The checkbox to start the server after the setup completes is selected by default, deselect it if you want. You have to set the port on which FileZilla server will listen to connections from the administration interface. The FileZilla server port used to serve client connections is set later. Choose your administrator password and enter it. Retype it to confirm it. If you don't set a password, for security reasons you can configure only servers responding on localhost. The administration interface can be set to start automatically for every user, for the current user or manually. The installation is complete, you can now start configuring FileZilla server. The connection dialog requires you to enter the host, that might be either an IP address or a host name, a port number and your password. If you installed FileZilla server locally, the host will be listening on the localhost IP, 127.0.0.1. The administration server will be listening on port 14148, unless during the installation you change the default value. If you set a password enter it, if you want to avoid retyping it select the checkbox. If you want the administration interface to connect automatically to that FileZilla server instance select the checkbox. To create a user click on the add button. Choose a name for the user and select the type of authentication. You can allow the user to access the server with or without a password, or using system credentials. For example, you can set slash as virtual path, associate a native path to it and set the permissions you like. In this video you learned how to install FileZilla server and how to create your first user. In this tutorial you will learn more about FileZilla server's user types and how to use placeholders to define native paths. When you create a user, you can use the special user called system user. The system user can impersonate any user already available on the operating system. In this case you can only use system credentials to log in. System credentials consist of a username and a password of a local user. You can also select the Use System Credentials also for accessing files and directories checkbox, to grant the user the same access privileges that are associated with their host operating system account. To enable anonymous access to your server, create a user and select Do not require a password to log in. If you don't want to use the operating system's user accounts but you want users to authenticate, select the option Require a password to log in. Then write the password in the next field and communicate that to the user through a secure channel. Placeholders are variables that can be used to define native paths. There are two types available. Colon H gets replaced with the absolute path corresponding to the home directory of the system user logged in. Colon U gets replaced with the name of the user logged in. It might be useful to define groups. In the example, the users belonging to the group would have slash pointing to their respective FTP home directories. In this video you learned more about FileZilla server users and how to configure them. FileZilla server is fast and reliable and it supports FTP and FTPS. Download it from FileZilla website, where you can also buy the manual. Stay tuned for the next tutorial videos.